Hi lovelies. So today has been exhausting. In my exhausted state, I thought that I would talk to you guys about talking to friends about being a sick person. I don't know if it's going to be about just being a person in general. I've had many, many years of being a sick person. I've finally come to the conclusion that that old saying of like, never say can't is not really helpful. If you can do anything, if you believe in yourself, it's not true. <laughs> you know me guys, I'm a very positive person. I'm like, you live your dreams, do whatever you can, and like, be the person that you want to be with some constraints. Everybody has them. Like, I can't be a model in New York City. I'm not tall enough. I'm not skinny enough. I'm not pretty enough. I can't. You can use the word can't. Accepting your own limitations is not a negative thing. Actually, it's very positive and empowering. Like, to constantly live in this fear and guilt. I need to do this because I can do anything if I put my mind to it. No, it's not healthy and it's not good and it's confusing. And if you're confused, how are the people around you who aren't even experiencing what your body is going through supposed to understand what you're going through? I think it's a huge thing to be proud of to understand what your body can do and knowing your limitations. And yes, there's a separation of Emily is this energetic, hopeful, faithful Christian, loves life, loves people, cares for people. And then there's the body that I'm in. That body is not energetic. That body doesn't want to be spontaneous and go on adventures and it doesn't want to. I do in my head, my personality, but my body doesn't allow me to do that. Once I figure out who I am, it's a lot easier to talk to people about it. And the hardest thing is, once you accept yourself, you have to realize that not everybody's going to accept you. Like I lived most of my life healthy and having whatever friends I ha wanted and doing whatever I wanted. And then I got ill and those actually were the hardest friends to talk to about it because it was like all of a sudden like what's going on if there comes a point where you have to say this is what i'm able to give you in our friendship i might not be able to text you back all the time i might not be able to answer your phone calls all the time i might have to cancel our plans five minutes before we're gonna do something and you have to be okay with that and if you're not that's completely fine. Like you can so not be okay with that, but we can't be friends. We don't have to be enemies. We don't have to hate each other. We don't have to fight or we can be different kind of friends. We Maybe we're not gonna be best friends, but maybe we're gonna be friends that just text or email or talk on the phone. We both can't put energy into something that's not gonna fulfill both of us. Any type of friendship or family Things go both ways and I have a lot to offer, but it doesn't necessarily mean I have what you want or you need. You have to define your relationship and make sure that people understand what you're able to give. And I think that's what's most confusing to people and I think that's the hardest thing for our friends and family to ask of us because they're afraid to ask us for things. They're afraid to say, I need this from you when you're ill. I mean, it's hard to be stuck in bed and have a friend come over and be like, hey, I really need you to get out of bed, put some clothes on and go to the movies with me. Cause those are the plans we had. And I'm the type of person that needs to keep plans and know what I'm doing and be able to rely on that person. And if that's not happening, there's gonna be conflict and there doesn't need to be. If people are just honest with each other and a little bit more open about what they can and can't do, then people understand a lot more. I'm afraid to make friends because we don't know how to express, I'm a sick person. Like When I told my boyfriend that I was sick for the first time, I actually didn't tell him for probably like a month. 
and ev all, everybody was like, you have to tell him because it was such a huge part of my life. But it was so nice, like not being the sick girl. I told him, I understand if you don't want to be with me. I can't do the things that like, I want to picture us doing. I can't just go hiking any day, go out on the boat, or we're going to have to like just chill and watch movies and take things slow and I'm very guarded and I have anxiety and there's going to be some days where I don't want to talk to you and I need to isolate. And I just kind of like laid that all out there and it's very it's a very vulnerable place to be but in the end it's much easier to say this is who I am this is what I can offer is this what you need and have the person either accept that or say you know let's cut our losses now and not get so involved that we're gonna get hurt and this is gonna be painful in the end and so for friends and boyfriends and girlfriends and things like that I think it's a lot better to just be brutally honest and put it out there early on and say this is this is who I am I have a lot to offer but this is what my body can do and this is what I can offer on my sickest days and that's really hard because for me saying I I'm not gonna be able to go pick up and just you fly to Vegas, all these things I used to be able to do and loved, like I loved just like spontaneously going on trips and admitting that I can't do that it was really hard and it was really conflicting in my brain because that's what I wanted but I can't physically do that. It's, it's scary but I promise you in the end the friendships that you make that are see-through and you are getting what you need from your friend and they're getting what they need from you and they understand and accept who you are because they know it's such a deeper level of friendship and you don't have to worry so much you don't have to be so fearful of being guilty or disappointing people or all those things that we like weigh ourselves down with because these people have made the conscious decision to be friends with you with these limitations so when you say okay I'm sorry I know we're supposed to meet up in five minutes but I feel awful I can't come they said okay to that they said I'm down with that I'm signing the lease for this car and I'm taking it for a drive and they say okay we'll do it another day you don't have to worry you don't have to be like panicking or oh my gosh are they gonna hate me are they gonna talk about me behind my back it's none of that stuff our friends and our family, the people that truly care about us, they're, they're worried. They feel guilty. They feel like, should I be doing more? How do they actually feel? Do they want me to come over when they're sick or do they want me to just leave them alone? They want to know, but it's hard to ask. And I think sometimes we forget that because we get so wrapped up in our own mind, especially when we're spending so much time by ourselves or just thinking a ton. I hope this helped a little bit with talking to friends and reaching out and I love all you guys that reach out to me and I will get back to you at some point so don't think that I'm just like ignoring you because I know since my update video I have gotten such awesome messages and emails and texts and uh, that good stuff so I will get back to you but I just wanted to talk about this because it was something I had to deal with today so I hope you guys are having a pain free stress free day I love you guys so much. I'm sending out X double O's. And as always, I love you guys. Mwah! Emily is my name, by the way. I just don't want you to think I was talking about like some random person. Oh my god. <gasps> there was just some sort of bug crawling on my leg, and I had to take care of that situation. And I feel really bad because I don't like to hurt any living creature, but it ran on my leg, so this may be its home but my leg is my home so step off that person had to just be like okay say la vie you know say la vie